Thousands of years ago, archaeologists found ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic prophecies which foretold of a year more epic than any that have come before. My friends, that year has come. Seriously though, are you prepared for how awesome 2019 is going to be? There's a long-awaited final season of Game of Thrones, the final film of the Star Wars sequel trilogy, the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, and so much more! What may be most impressive about this year are the 10, that's right, I said 10, superhero films that will grace our movie screens this year. Not just any regular superhero films either. There's Thanos v Avengers Round 2, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker, the end of the X-Men Cinematic Universe, and a bigger, badder Hellboy. It's enough to make you wish you could get your hands on the Time Stone. Here are 10 superhero movies coming out in 2019 that are so much more than just another superhero movie. Brie Larson is well on her way to becoming an all-star. Since her big break as Envy Adams in Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, her career has been skyrocketing. It seemed to have peaked in 2015 when she won an Oscar for her powerful performance in Room. She may outdo herself again this year when she joins the Marvel Universe as Air Force pilot turned Kree soldier Carol Danvers. Larson is joined by Nick Fury himself, Samuel L. Jackson, as he gets his first look into the superhero world. Here, we'll finally find out how he lost his eye, though I doubt they'll explain why his eye scars change in almost every film he's in. Does his eye just keep growing back, only for someone to cut it out? Nah, these are the answers we need, Marvel. This movie has an amnesia-stricken Danver sent to Earth as a Kree peacekeeper. She is meant to fight off the evil machinations of the villainous shapeshifter race known as the Skrulls. It appears that their evil plan is to impersonate the Grandmothers of America in order to take over the world. Ten Buck says that Betty White is the final boss battle. Carol has to get through this fight while slowly regaining her memories against the pressures of her Kree mentor played by the sexy Dumbledore Jude Law. Among the other big names, like this decade's go-to villain Ben Mendelsohn, who definitely isn't playing a scroll, are Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s Phil Coulson, Guardians of the Galaxy's Ronan, and Annette Bening, who really just needs a paycheck. This will also mark Marvel's first female lead superhero film throughout over a decade of production. Sorry, Black Widow. Marvel definitely isn't milking this against all of the criticism they've had over the diversity in the days since Wonder Woman made a ton of money. Seriously, whoever figured out that the word her is found in the word hero for the first trailer was probably promoted immediately to the head of advertising at Marvel. Real subtle, guys. Well, it looks like 2019 is the year we'll have to realize that the sequel to 2004's Hellboy and 2008's Hellboy 2 The Golden Army is just not going to happen. While the completion to the Ron Perlman slash Guillermo del Toro Hellboy trilogy may have been immensely satisfying, we may just have to make peace with the fact that there's a new Hellboy in town. This year, Stranger Things' Jim Hopper himself, David Arbor, will be teaming up with The Descent and Game of Thrones director Neil Marshall to bring a grittier version of the character to the screens. Ian McShane is filling in for the late John Hurt as Professor Brutenholm as he works alongside the PBRD against Mia Jovovich's Nemua the Blood Queen. I apologize in retrospect for all of the names I'm saying incorrectly. It remains to be seen if the film can compete with the unique visual style of the Del Toro films, but it should be a great time nonetheless, and it'll be great to see the big guy back with that red right hand of his. Would it be too much to ask for a scene where he sings Barry Manilow, though? It's hard to believe that there was a time where the original Captain Marvel was the most popular superhero of them all. No, not the Carol Danvers one. Since his golden days, the hero has had a rough ride, First, he lost a great deal of his history when he was brought into the DC Universe. Then, he lost his name to the Marvel version of the character, and has never been able to climb back up the ranks of superhero popularity since. That may change this year when the character has his very first big screen debut. The story is that of a young orphan named Billy Batson who gets the power of a wizard and becomes an adult superhero when he shouts the wizard's name, SHAZAM! Chuck and Tangled actor Zachary Levi has beefed up considerably to play the superhero version as he fights against Mark Strong's Dr. Savannah. It is strange that both Captain Marvels are getting their first film within a month of each other. It's also strange that actor Jiman Hansu is somehow in both of these movies. There's no way there will be any competition for these two though. If there is one thing that no comic book fans are known for, it's arbitrary competitions between superhero franchises. It's probably not much of an overstatement to say that Avengers Endgame is the biggest, most hyped superhero film of all time. The last film, Infinity War, ended with half the Marvel Universe destroyed after space warlord Thanos used the Infinity Gauntlet to decimate the universe's population. Or at least half of it. That film was the boldest entry into the Marvel Universe yet, combining the Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange, and the armies of Wakanda in order to fight and lose against Thanos. It seems like it's nearly impossible to outdo that film, but Endgame is going to give it a good shot. 
Aside from the team leading the final assault against Thanos, we'll also see Captain America reuniting with Tony Stark for the first time since the proverbial superhero Beatles broke up in 2016's Civil War. We'll also see Bruce Banner and the Hulk finally get over their differences as well. Joining the team from the first film are a freshly saved Quantum Realm Ant-Man, a seriously angsty sword wielding Hawkeye, who does know he can use non-medieval weapons, right? And Captain Marvel, who will hopefully love, despite the fact that she's been MIA for like 20 years. We'll see them somehow save Spider-Man, Black Panther, and the rest of them from their dusty demise. They already showed a trailer from Spidey's next film, so it's pretty safe to say that they win. Unless, of course, that was a product of an alternate universe. Most of the plot of the film has been kept under wraps thus far, but some rumors involve time travel, a few big name deaths, and plenty of setups for future films. This may be the jumpstart of the next phase of the MCU, but it's also likely the end of the road for several major players. For characters like Tony Stark, Captain America, Thor, and the Hulk, this may very well be their last ride. Basically what I'm saying is that all theaters should stock each seat with tissues. There's gonna be a lot of man tears filling this April. Speaking of endings, with the end of the big Disney-Fox merger, the X-Men are likely about to be rebooted as part of the MCU. This means that Fox's Dark Phoenix may be the last film in the extended franchise. Thus far, the X-Movies have ranged from the incredible like X2, Deadpool and Logan, to the downright awful like X-Men The Last Stand, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, and X-Men Apocalypse, I, I could go on. Dark Phoenix has its sights set on wiping the sins of at least one of these films clean. The movie is taking another shot at the famous Chris Claremont Dark Phoenix arc, where Jean Grey becomes all-powerful supervillain Phoenix. If that plot sounds familiar, it's because Brett Ratner already tried that in 2006's The Last Stand. That movie is widely regarded as among the worst superhero films of all time, so the pressure is on. This time around, the writer of The Last Stand, Simon Kinberg, has moved up to the director's chair and wants to make up for his past mistakes. He's got the first-class cast featuring A-list talent like James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, and Jennifer Lawrence. He's also got Game of Thrones star Sophie Turner who will be taking a shot at Famke Jensen's original Phoenix performance. While many fans hope that Dark Phoenix serves as a fitting end for the X-Men cinematic universe, the fact that it's been pushed back twice since its original November 2nd release date last year doesn't really bode well. At least it's the only X-Men disappointment that we'll get this year, right? Okay, maybe not. One of the most famous comics from Chris Claremont's universe-spanning X-Men run was his invention of the Teen Titans-style young X-Men team known as the New Mutants. The Fault in Our Stars director Josh Boone is taking on the challenge of adapting the famous comic for the big screen. This film follows Deadpool and Logan's shoes in carving out new forms of superhero movies by casting the New Mutants in a horror movie instead of just a typical superhero action romp. The first trailer excited fans by showing the team stuck in a horrifying asylum for superheroes. This really would have been a much more original concept a year ago. It even has glasses on your Taylor Joy. The cast features lots of other up-and-coming talents like Stranger Things' actor Charlie Heaton and Arya Stark herself, Macy Williams. While it originally seemed like it would be a landmark film of the genre, the buzz around it has been incredibly bad. The film was originally supposed to be released in April of last year. Then it was pushed to February of this year before being pushed again to August of 2019. The rumor is now that it won't even make that date and could arrive on Hulu later this summer instead of the big screen. That's the modern day equivalent of a big blockbuster going straight to video. Are they gonna remember what a video is? Could someone Google what a VHS looks like? Man, the X-Men films really don't have their act together this year. Maybe it's a good thing that Marvel bought you. While New Mutants may not be breaking new ground for the genre like we thought it would, one film seems designed to shake the genre right down to its core this year. That film would be none other than the Martin Scorsese-produced Joker movie. What started off as the ultimate huh headline from last year has become one of the most interesting films to follow heading into this year. In 2008, Heath Ledger won an Oscar for his extraordinary performance as the Joker. He elevated the character from one of the greatest comic book villains of all time to one of the greatest movie villains of all time. His interpretation of the Joker stands alongside names like Hannibal Lecter and Darth Vader in the movie Villain Hall of Fame. The Jared Leto version of the character failed to reach those heights. His take on the Clown Prince of Crime is widely regarded as the worst take on the character ever. If that's not bad enough, his off-screen behavior on Suicide Squad makes Shia LaBeouf seem like Coworker of the Year. Luckily, this wipes the Heath Ledger slate clean for Joaquin Phoenix to take it on this year. Aside from his sure-to-be iconic performance, he's joined by stars like Robert De Niro and Zazie Beetz from Atlanta and Deadpool 2. 
They're led by The Hangover's Todd Phillips in a film that is supposedly set in the 1970s, R-rated, and loosely inspired by Taxi Driver. So is the Joker going to say, why so serious to himself in the mirror like the you talking to me scene in, in Taxi Driver? Anybody? The Spider-Man franchise had possibly its best year in 2018. He finally got to be a full-fledged Avenger in Infinity War, Venom was somehow a runaway hit, the Spider-Man video game was one of the best of last year, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse won a freaking Oscar. Uh -uh. Take that, Pixar. That means the franchise has some pressure going into this year. Luckily, it isn't pulling any punches. Tom Holland's Peter Parker had the most tragic death in the last Avengers movie. Especially if you look at his I'm sorry dying line as an apology for not getting the gauntlet off in time like many fans think. That's right, Peter Parker thinks the decimation is his fault. Go ahead and cry all over again. Judging from the trailer for Spider-Man Far From Home, Peter makes it out of the sequel just fine. This time, Peter and his high school buddies are swinging out of New York and into Europe for a big class field trip. This is where they'll see sights, have some romance, and learn about new cultures. Oh, and also fight giant elemental monsters. Oh, come on. You didn't think that Peter Parker was actually going to catch a break, did you? Midway into his vacation, Peter is sought out by Nick Fury. Yes, Sam Jackson is in like four superhero movies this year, five if you want to count Shaft. He tasks Spidey with taking on a slew of elemental manipulating baddies that are tearing across Europe. While he does this, he'll run into Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, who is reimagined as a wannabe superhero this time around. It's pretty likely that Mysterio is pulling a syndrome from the Incredibles in order to make himself look like a hero. The movie is supposed to have new suits, big twists, and even more of everyone's favorite guy in the chair, Ned. Most importantly though, it seems like Happy is going to be making time with Aunt May. Maybe that's Marvel's way of apologizing to Jon Favreau for Iron Man 2. One superhero movie to have already graced the screens in 2019 is M. Night Shyamalan's Glass. Last year, Shyamalan surprised audiences all over the world when he revealed that his James McAvoy thriller, Split, was actually a sort of sequel to his famous cult classic, Unbreakable. Glass is sort of like his Avengers, as he throws the characters from both movies together. Unbreakable focuses on David Dunn, a security guard who possesses mild super strength, the ability to sense people's evil intentions through touch, and a strange weakness to water. He is recruited by Sam L. Jackson's comic book obsessed super genius, Mr. Glass, who is convinced someone like Dunn exists to contrast his brittle bones that break at the slightest bit of pressure. They're joined by James McAvoy's Kevin Wendell Crum, who is a supervillain known as the Horde, who is affected by a very severe case of disassociative identity disorder. Of these dozens of personalities, one is called the Beast, Shyamalan is not known for being subtle, who also has super strength along with some cannibalistic tendencies and delusions of grandeur. The three of them are captured and taken to an insane asylum where they are treated by Sarah Paulson's Dr. Ellie Staple. She believes they all have a severe psychological disorder where they all delusionally believe they're superheroes, or er, villains, beings, super beings. It's no surprise that this doesn't last long before all three escape and Mr. Glass pits Dunn and Crumb's super strength against each other in a big fight for all the world to see. While some fans truly enjoyed the finale to the Unbreakable trilogy, most critics hated it. Shyamalan may have seemed like he was on his way to a career resurgence since Devil, The Visit, and Split, but Glass may have proved that his career is going back to its Lady in the Water route. Regardless, as long as he doesn't make another movie as bad as The Last Airbender, I'm sure he'll be fine. Though seriously, how could anyone ever make a movie as bad as The Last Airbender? Not that long ago, James Gunn seemed like everyone's favorite director. He'd successfully brought about two Guardians of the Galaxy films and was working on several new films set in Marvel's cosmic universe. Then a few tweets from a couple years back cropped up again and he was fired from all things Disney. This year, Gunn is seeking to start his inevitable comeback by producing this Superman-inspired horror flick written by his brothers Brian and Mark Gunn. The first trailer for the film shocked fans all over the country by taking on a much darker look at the Superman trope. The first half of it plays very much like the first Man of Steel trailer. It has lots of shots of farmlands and very nice voiceovers like it's a Terrence Malick movie that actually makes sense. Then it takes a sharp turn when you realize this little Clark Kent isn't an all-American Boy Scout. He's actually terrifying. This movie promises to be a truly original take on the genre and will undoubtedly be a better horror superhero film than whatever the new mutants ends up being. That doesn't really seem that hard though. There have been years with huge slates of superhero films in the past, but none like 2019. None of this is even mentioning other films like Star Wars Episode 9, John Wick Chapter 3, Toy Story 4, or the quote unquote live action Lion King. Go ahead and start saving your money now because you're going to end up at the theaters at least twice a week this year. Let us know in the comments which superhero films you're most looking forward to this year, and don't forget to like and subscribe for all of your movie needs from The Binger. Thanks for watching.